Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanuka broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Monday and I'd like to remind our new listeners that Kanguka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. Please be aware that you can access all the broadcasts at any time by visiting the Kanguka website kanguka.com or by visiting the Kanguka English channel on YouTube or by downloading the Kanguka mobile app on your phone. Just type Kanguka, that's K-A-N-G-U-K-A. As usual every Monday, I want to take a moment to thank all those who pray for the Kanguka team. We really need your prayers and we also pray for you. Every time you pray for us, don't forget to mention the partners of Kanguka. There are men and women who contribute to the progress of this work. We wouldn't have been able to continue all these years if it weren't for partners who support us with their means. Pray for them and pray for us. If this broadcast has blessed you in any way, don't forget to mention the Kanguka team in your prayers. As usual on Mondays, I like to remind you about the guiding principles of Kanguka. The first principle is to accept the will of God, even if it's different from our own will. The second, is to pray every day. And the third, it's forbidden to complain, instead we must give thanks in everything. Today I'm going to talk about the second principle which is to pray every day. If you pray every day, you need to know that it's a blessing. Never take it for granted. The people who encounter problems but who pray daily remain confident because they are connected to God and they have a special relationship with Him. There is a protection that you have if you pray every day. There are many things that can prevent people from praying daily. I'm not saying they don't pray at all, but that they don't pray every day. Among these obstacles, I'll mention just two today. People might not be able to pray every day because they don't feel well physically or emotionally. The second reason is that they might feel betrayed by God. I use the term betrayed because that's how some people might feel. I've heard people say, why should I keep praying when I have a problem with God himself? I'm angry with God. Why did he allow all this? Why did he let me lose my child? Why did he allow my marriage to be destroyed? Why did he let me lose my job? How could a loving God allow this? So I have decided not to pray anymore. Or I just go to church to show up physically, but I'm still angry with God. I won't pray, I won't open my heart to God. All of you who say this, I want you to know that you are fulfilling the will of the devil. In fact, prayer is the first weapon that Satan fears. He will try to discourage you, he wants you to feel betrayed. You will hear a voice saying, what's the point of persisting in prayer since, no matter what, even if you pray, unimaginable, difficult things still happen to you. Remember what happened to you even when you had prayed. But you need to know that this voice does not come from God. These are not even your own thoughts. It's the voice of the devil. He wants you to lower your guard, to stop praying so he can attack you easily. Let's take a look at what Jesus said about prayer. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, it is written, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. This means that some people pray, but they do not stay vigilant. If you are not vigilant, you might pray today but not tomorrow. Your prayer life will fluctuate based on your mood, time, and availability. But why is it important to stay vigilant? Because those who are watchful understand spiritual matters and they remain alert every day. The verse says you must watch and pray to avoid falling into temptation. This implies there are many temptations in this world. When we are weak, when the flesh dominates, and when carnal impulses prevail, we easily fall into sin. The verse goes on to say, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Just like your phones need to be recharged to function properly, your spirit needs to be recharged through prayer and connected to God in order to overcome the flesh. If the Spirit, the Holy Spirit within you, is not strengthened through prayer, it will be too weak to overcome the flesh. This means that the desires of the flesh will dominate the Spirit, leading us to fall into the enemy's trap. However, when you pray, you are connected to God, and you receive divine strength, the power of the Holy Spirit, which enables you to overcome everything. Prayer is not just about asking or pleading with God to intervene in your life. It also serves to build a relationship with God and it strengthens the one who prays. Prayer will give you a strength you didn't have before. It will enable you to succeed where you previously failed. It will help you stay on the right path and not return to your old ways. It will keep you from going back to the life from which God has delivered you. It's now time to continue the teaching called, Why Do We Fast? This is a teaching we began on June 24th. If you're new to the broadcast, I recommend you check the archives to catch up on what we've discussed. 
As I've mentioned before, many Christians fast without understanding why, which is why our topic is, why do we fast? There are individual fasts and collective fasts within churches. You might find yourself fasting because your entire church is fasting for 40 days, 21 days, or 2 weeks, but you don't know the reason behind it. It's very important for a Christian to understand why they fast. Some people don't fast because they believe that fasting isn't a New Testament practice, but I have shown you that in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, the apostles fasted. Jesus himself said that when he is taken away, when he goes to heaven, the disciples will fast. As long as Jesus was with the disciples, they did not fast, but when he left, they fasted for ten days until the day of Pentecost. Even today, we must continue to fast because Jesus is in heaven at the right hand of the Father. There are things you can receive through ordinary prayer, but there are things you will never receive without fasting. There are blessings or promises of God that require fasting. As I have told you, fasting elevates us to a higher spiritual level. Let's turn now to the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. I asked you to read the entire chapter. In verse 2, we see people who are fasting and seeking God. But in verse 3, we see the people complaining, saying, Why have we fasted, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls, and you take no notice? They are addressing God. Why should we fast if you, God, do not see it? Why mortify our souls if you take no notice? It is important to fast, but you need to make sure you're on the right path. You need to make sure you pray in the name of Jesus. You need to make sure there are no idols in your life. Some Christians fast while still holding onto idols. If that's the case, you need to know that this fast doesn't count. The fast must be in spirit and in truth. Remember what Jesus said. He said the time is coming when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. When you fast, make sure you fast and pray in the name of Jesus. In the same verse 3, we see God responding, In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure, and exploit all your laborers. Last Friday, I mentioned that your attitude is very important. Your attitude matters when you fast. When you fast, God not only listens to what you say, but God also observes your life. It's not just a spiritual exercise. Here, we see that God rebukes them because they fast while indulging in their desires and mistreating their laborers, meaning their servants or slaves. Let's talk now about the first part which says, you find pleasure. What does it mean to find pleasure? It means that you fast and expect God to give you exactly what you want. You know what you want and hope that your fast will force God to do what you desire. In other words, you are not interested in God's will. What God wants does not concern you. You absolutely want what you want. When you are in this position, this fast has no strength. It has no power because God wants someone who accepts his will. That's why the first guiding principle of Kanguka always reminds us to accept God's will, even when it's different from our own. So if you insist on something and refuse to hear otherwise, if you absolutely want God to do what you want, then you are not fasting with humility. You're fasting like someone who commands God. Remember what is written in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. So God listens to us if we ask for something according to His will. Verse 15 says, And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. So before asking for something, you need to be sure you are within God's will. Is it what God wants? That's what's important. So he spoke about those who indulge their desires while fasting. Next, he talks about those who treat their servants harshly. The servants he's talking about, today it's domestic workers. Many people in Africa have domestic workers. You have someone who cooks your food. You have a nanny who takes care of your child. But how do you treat your domestic workers? How do you treat your employees? If you are a boss, an employer somewhere, how do you treat your subordinates? How do you treat someone you pay? Your driver, how do you treat him? Your behavior, your attitude, matters a lot while you are fasting. This is new for some. When you fast, God observes your behavior with those who are below you. God observes your behavior with your husband, with your wife, with your children, with Christians, with brothers and sisters in the Lord, and above all, He observes your intention. Do you want God's perfect will, or do you just want to satisfy your carnal desires? Tomorrow I will talk about those who mistreat their servants because it blocks the hand of God during fasting. May I am bless you, be blessed, everyone. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.